Okay, could you please tell us what is a black hole? So a black hole is a region of space-time um, where gravity is so strong that nothing can escape, uh, not even light. And in, in any relativistic theory, and in particular in general relativity, information can only propagate at a finite speed. And the maximum speed in which information propagates is the speed of light. So if there is a region of space-time in which gravity is so strong that it pulls even light and it keeps it within this region, then whatever happens in this region cannot be communicated to the outside world. So once you fall into a black hole, then you are doomed. And how did, how were black holes discovered? To be fair, we still do not have direct evidence uh, for black holes. This is a prediction of general relativity, and we think that in nature, black holes should occur uh, generically. And there are two situations in which we think that these compact dark, dark objects for which we have evidence should be black holes, and the black holes described by general relativity. So these two instances are, um, firstly, massive stars, when they run out of nuclear fuel, um, they collapse under their own gravity, and there is no other force in nature which can withstand the pull of gravity. And then general relativity tells us that under such conditions, then such object will collapse and form a black hole. Also, at the center of uh, most galaxies, in fact, probably all of them, there lurks a supermassive black hole, weighing like millions or even billions of solar masses. And in particular, at the center of our Milky Way, we do have a compact dark object, which weighs about 4 million solar masses. Uh, it's small, it doesn't emit light, and the only object in nature with uh, such properties that we know of is a black hole. So we don't, haven't seen them because they are small, they are dark, so they're very hard to see, but we have seen indirect evidence, for example, when there's a star orbiting around a black hole, the black hole sucks gas from the stars, which this gas uh, gets very hot at, as it approaches the black hole and this emits x-rays which we can observe. But we haven't detected black holes directly yet. But this is likely to happen um, at the end of this year or maybe next year with the new gravitational wave detectors. So we, there's the possibility we could directly observe a black hole because of the gravitational waves they emit? That's correct. Um, for example, in, in in binary systems, and so when there are two black holes orbiting each other, because they move, they emit gravitational waves, and the, the waveforms that they emit, the patterns, uh, we can calculate them by solving the Einstein equations with uh, big computers, and we can compare those with the uh, experiments. And fortunately, there seem to be gravitational wave detectors which are going to be ready at the end of this year, which are sensitive enough to detect those waves. And if the signal agrees with our sort of predictions, then that would be uh, that would count as direct detection, I guess. When you said before that but basically black holes there's a singularity in the middle of them where curvature becomes extremely or space becomes extremely bent and uh, I think density as well gets infinitely high. But do we really know that? Because we you know there is this horizon forming around the black hole so we cannot see inside. So are things really infinite in there or do we have any idea of what's really going well, on inside? Well, this is actually an excellent question, and the honest answer is that, is that we don't know. Um, so often infinities in, in, in physical theories just simply mean that the theory that you use to describe the situation breaks down. So we think that infinities do not occur in nature. It's just that in that region, the curvature is very large, but this region is also microscopic in size. So in order to describe the physics of these singularities, you need a theory that combines, uh, that is able to describe you know, gravity, namely strong uh, gravitational fields, and at the same time, microphysics, so namely the theory of uh, quantum gravity. There are some candidates out there, but we are still far in terms of understanding uh, how to describe uh, what happens in singularities. What's remarkable is that the singularities are hidden uh, inside black holes, namely they are covered by a horizon. And as we said earlier, because this region inside the horizon, gravity is so strong that nothing can escape. So even if we don't know what happens to the singularity, even if we 
to know uh, how to describe the singularities, whatever happens there cannot influence what happens to the world outside. So, you know, in some sense, black holes um, conceal our ignorance uh, in the interior. So, a horizon isn't a physical it isn't a physical thing. It's actually the point at which space becomes mm -hmm. space time is so curved. Mm -hmm. um, it's a favourite theme of science fiction mm -hmm. um, to think about what would happen as you came close to a black hole or perhaps even passed over the horizon. Mm -hmm. um, what do we know about those situations and what do you think might happen? Well, yeah, I mean, a horizon is, is physical in the sense that it's, it, it's, a, it's a place uh, beyond which light can no longer escape. So it's physical. Um, now, what's important about uh, Horizon is that is it likes it acts like a one main like a one way membrane. It's a soft surface, right? So you can just cross it, and you wouldn't even notice that you've that you've crossed the horizon. It's not like like a surface of a star where you, you know just you know run into a star, you hit it and you burn. It's not like that in principle. There's some debate about whether indeed it's a soft surface or not. Um, so it's not a completely settled issue, but um, it seems, according to general relativity alone, then it should be a soft surface. And this is in fact one of the experimental signatures that uh, astronomers are looking for in terms of detecting black holes. When you see gas falling into a black hole, then if the horizon wasn't a soft surface, then you would expect there should be emission of, of, of uh, X-rays as the gas falls, and this has not been seen. So it's a soft surface, so if you you can just cross it, and in principle, if the black hole is large enough, then you wouldn't feel anything until it's too late. Now what happens is that close to the black hole, because gravity is strong, uh, time runs slower for you, so even if you could stay there, you wouldn't feel much, um, but if you compare your clock with a, an observer far from the black hole, then you would see that you haven't aged uh, that much, whilst he, he or she has become much older. Uh, but other than that, uh, you'll be perfectly fine. Now, if you cross it, um, then general relativity tells us that uh, once you are inside the black hole, you are essentially doomed. Uh, and you will eventually hit the singularity and you will be destroyed. So it's not something I would advise you to do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember seeing a picture, I think Kip Thorne drew, that you would kind of become stretched along one kind of direction, <laughs> yes. spaghettification. Of. Yes, yes, yes. Well, this, is, this has to do with, with, with curvature, because curvature is large. So if the black hole is small, then the difference between the curvature uh, at your head and at your feet is so large that you get stretched like a spaghetti. It's like this tidal effect. But if the black hole is very big, then the gravitational field is very uniform. Even though it's strong, it's very uniform. Um, so the difference between gravity at your head and at your feet wouldn't be that large, so therefore you could approach the horizon of a very big black hole and not feeling anything at all. So it's only when the black holes are small that the difference between the gravity head and your feet is what uh, leads to this spaghettification mm -hmm. that Kip Thorne uh, talked about. But if you go to the center of the galaxy where the black hole is big, then you can get very close and you'll be perfectly fine. So what about really, really tiny black holes? I mean, you probably remember when they started off the LHC some years mm -hmm. ago, people were saying it was going to create all these tiny black holes everywhere, which would be terrible and dangerous. I mean, A, do tiny black holes get created in particle accelerators? <laughs> and B, are they in any way dangerous? Um, well, black holes, or the black holes that we know of, these are microscopic objects. Um, but of course, we know that nature at these sort of uh, tiny scales is governed by quantum mechanics. So when you combine quantum mechanics with general relativity, then Stephen Hawking uh, very famously discovered that black holes uh, radiate and gradually evaporate. This process is very slow for big black holes. But if the black holes are small, then what happens is that the smaller the black hole is, the hotter it is, that is to say the hotter the radiation that it emits uh, is. So as it becomes smaller, the black hole, perhaps, um, uh, it's a bit surprising, but the smaller it becomes and the hotter it is, so the faster it emits radiation, 
and then when it becomes you know very very tiny, it finally would explode uh, into a burst of, of radiation. This was the danger that people thought that would could happen at the LHC because if you create a black hole, then maybe you know it will not have time to evaporate because it will suck you know matter and then eventually swallow. Uh, the LHC. I mean, some people say, well, if, for as long as it solves France, then it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard some colleagues saying that, but it could swallow the whole Earth, but whatever. We think that this is not dangerous at all, because the energies that we, that we uh, manage to get at the LHC are small, very small, in fact, compared to the energies of cosmic rays that have been hitting the Earth for billions uh, of, of years. So the upper layers of the atmosphere are constantly being bombarded by super high energy cosmic rays. These are essentially high uh, elementary particles, like the ones that we collide in the LHC, and we haven't seen anything strange happening in the upper layers of the atmosphere. The Earth has been sitting here for about four and a half billion years, um, so we think that producing a black hole at the LHC, if it happened, um, wouldn't be dangerous. And like I said, the experimental evidence it indicates that these models uh, are not favored. So we have nothing to fear from black holes. We have nothing to fear from black holes. In fact, if we produce black holes at the LHC, it would be, it would be very exciting, because uh, this would be microscopic black holes, so eventually they would be governed by the laws of quantum gravity. So it would be tremendously exciting, because we would have a window into quantum gravity. But unfortunately, this hasn't happened yet. You said they're to do with Einstein's theory of general relativity. So were they first predicted by the mathematical equations of that theory? Yeah, well, in fact, uh, Einstein published his theory in late 1915, and uh, only a few months later, in early 1916, Schwarzschild uh, found the first solution of the Einstein equation that describes uh, uh, the gravitational field of a spherically symmetric body, and in particular describes a black hole. Uh, but at that time, it wasn't understood that that solution corresponded to a black hole. And in fact, uh, even in the 30s, you know, the greatest mind of that time, Einstein himself, despised the idea of a black hole because it contained a singularity, namely a place where curvature is so large that even general relativity breaks down. So it took nearly 60 years or 50 years to really understand what a black hole is, and this was done only in the, in the 1960s. So we had this solution from the early days of general relativity, but until the 1960s we didn't understand that that corresponded to a black hole, and moreover, only then we sort of started to understand that those solutions are physical, and they were important in nature. So what has it got to do with the curvature of space-time? How, d how does that work in a, to do with a black hole? Well, black hole... Um, object in which the curvature of the space-time is very large. So the strength of the gravitational field is measured in terms of the curvature, uh, and because black holes are very massive and they are very small, then gravity is very strong in those, and, um, and this is gets translated to the fact that the curvature is very large. So one way to characterize the curvature uh, is, if you want, uh, it's something called the, the Schwarzschild radius. Um, the Schwarzschild radius is more or less the size that a given object with a given mass should have in order for it to be a black hole. So, for instance, uh, if we manage to concentrate all the mass of the Earth into a sphere of a radius of a few centimeters, then that object would be a black hole. Of course, we know that this cannot happen because there are other forces in nature which prevent this from happening, uh, but for other circumstances, this can happen, and, and this is precisely what happens in, in very massive stars, that when they run out of nuclear fuel, then they cool down, then they collapse, and at some point, they become small enough so that the whole mass fits within its own Schwarzschild radius, and therefore they form a black hole. For the Sun, the Schwarzschild radius of the Sun is uh, of the order of a few kilometers, so if we manage to concentrate the whole mass of the Sun in the, to a sphere of a few kilometers, then that would be a black hole. But with the sun, this is not going to happen. So there's some relatively simple maths that characterizes when something, the conditions for something to be a black hole. Could you show us an example? Of well, so what I've just said is the, the Schwarzschild radius. This, this is the size that an object should have in order for it to be a black hole. So 
this right child radius of a black hole is given by uh, this formula. So that's Newton's constant, uh, that's the mass of the object, and that's the speed of light. Um, so this is the size that uh, this is the size that an object should have uh, in order for it to be a black hole. And as I said, for the sun, we know that we cannot concentrate the whole mass of the sun into a sphere of this size, but for other objects in nature this can happen, and in fact we think that it does happen. Um, um, people often say that black holes can be characterized by quite a few features, like their mass and their size. Can you explain that a bit more? So, one of the reasons why black holes are so important in our understanding of general relativity is, is because of their simplicity. Because they are made of the most fundamental building blocks of a theory, namely space and time alone. Um, so they are very simple and therefore we can understand them. This should be contrasted with, say, other gravitational objects, such as a star, in which, in order to understand a star, you need to take into account general relativity, but you also need to understand you know, nuclear physics to account for nuclear reactions, you need to understand plasma physics to understand the you know, transport of heat within the star, and this gets very complicated, so it's very difficult, and we are often led to study these objects within certain approximations. But we don't have to do that with black holes, because they are only made of space and time, so we have a complete understanding of them within our theory a lot, so we don't need any other piece of physics. And this simplicity gets translated into the fact that they are just described in terms of some very few parameters. So in the vacuum case, if the black hole is static, then it must be spherical, and there's only one parameter characterizing the black hole, namely its mass. But Objects in nature, like stars, they rotate, so the black hole that occur in nature should have some rotation. So there is corresponding generalization of the Schwarzschild solution that incorporates rotation, and this is called the Kerr solution, which was found in the 1960s. So Schwarzschild solution was found months after Einstein published its theory, but it took another 50 years to find the general solution which has rotation and is relevant to describe the black holes of nature. This curve solution is described entirely by just two parameters, namely the mass and the spin of the black hole. So with these two parameters, we are, you can fully characterize all black holes of nature. And we don't need to make any approximations to understand those objects. And this is why they are so important. And in this sense, they are no different than elementary particles, because elementary particles, within a theory, we only need to specify a few parameters, and that's it, that's all you need. So the same with black holes. So these are, black holes are the elementary particles of general relativity. Somebody recently mentioned that they thought that black holes were really still the, the biggest open mystery of general relativity. Is that right? Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would, I would agree with that because black holes, as I said, are a prediction of general relativity. And we know several instances in nature where we think that they should occur, and we haven't detected them yet. So it, it's still uh, an open question whether uh, they, are, uh, they are there or not, or whether they have the properties that general relativity predicts. Now this is important because most of the tests that we have done about general relativity concern what's called the weak field regime. So it only, uh, we've only been able to test linearized gravity, that is to say, situations where gravity is weak, or relatively weak. So, uh, for example, we've, we've tested bending of light, the uh, precession of the perihelion of Mercury. This is just a, a linear effect. It's a, gravity is weak near the Sun, for instance, or on the Earth. It's weak. Detecting black holes would be important because um, the signals that we would get, namely those gravitational waves, would be generated in, in regions where gravity is very strong. So it would be very important because precisely it would allow us to test the strong field regime of general relativity, which is something that we haven't been able to do so far. And this would put very you know, strong tests on general relativity. So it's very important that we see black holes because we would get a completely new uh, window into general relativity.